Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning and welcome to Christ Episcopal Church in Temple, Texas. I'm Leon Couch, the music director. I'll tell you about the prelude and postlude. The postlude is named All Things Bright and Beautiful. It may be a familiar hymn. Uh, Emma Lou Diemer was the composer of this, born in 1927. I'm featuring a lot of women composers today and or pieces that were attributed uh, honoring women. So in the prelude, I have a piece by Marcel Dupre called Ave Maria Stella. This is based on one of the first Marian hymns from the 10th century and still sung today, well known amongst Catholics. Uh, the second piece is A Blessed Thought by Florence Price. She was the first African-American composer really featured by the major orchestras of the 20th century. And this is a small, uh, pleasant thought for you.
Mother's Day. Good morning and welcome to Christ Episcopal Church in Temple, Texas. I'm Janice Krause, the interim rector, and we're delighted that you are worshiping with us this morning. We have a busy calendar, a lot of things going on in this parish. I hope that you're able to download the bulletin, which is found on a link there on the Facebook website, to follow along and to know what's going on in the parish. We also send out weekly emails. If you're not getting an email, please do let the church office know. We would be happy to add you to the list. In honor of Mother's Day, we will not have the adult forum today at 1230. We're just taking this Sunday off so that we can celebrate all of our moms. Next week, we will be having a service here in the church. So if you would like to join us at 1030, we'll be online at 9, but also 1030 in the pews. We would love to have you. On May 23rd, it is Pentecost, and so we are inviting everybody to come join us at 1030 in the parking lot. We will always have our 9 o'clock Facebook, but join us in the parking lot at 1030 if you're able. We're red. We're going to be taking pictures to make a family portrait. We'll be celebrating the day, and stick around. We'll have lunch afterwards and talk about the book, The Way of Love. Also, the following week, we're going to be celebrating graduating seniors on June, 3rd, June 6th. So if you are a 2021 graduate, or I will say, if you're a 2020 graduate and we missed you last year due to the pandemic, please do send in some information. Amy's sending out an email. We would love to have your picture and some information about where you're graduating from and what you might be doing in your next chapter of your life so we can include it in the bulletin and we can celebrate you on June 6th. And then don't forget, August 13th through 15th, we have a parish retreat at Camp Allen. I hope you signed up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Phew, there are a lot of things going on in this church. Please do take a look at your bulletin and at your emails. But now, I would like to begin, as we have a tradition here, of taking a few moments to gather our thoughts as we ring the bell. Please stand as you are able and join me in saying, Almighty, Almighty God of the cross and, and loving God, God of community, we are not in a church building today, but church is never canceled. We are not wise and not very often kind, but we are the body of Christ in your suffering world. We know that our vocation is to be the light of this Christ, whose body we are. Give us courage to be the church and to keep our minds on what matters, which is to keep loving the world which you have called good. Buildings crumble, the church here passes, but your church endures from generation to generation. Make this for us a feast day of your protection, your plenty, your purpose, your plan, and your peace. All this we ask with all the saints and with each other. Amen. Please join me in singing our opening hymn. We'll be singing verses 1, 2, and 6. Earth and the Lord, those rushing planets sing to the Lord a new song of victory. Shouting army, sing to the Lord a new song. He hath done marvelous things. I too will praise him with a new song. Wind and rain, loud blowing snowstorms, speak to the Lord a new song. 
apples and trees throughout rusting dry leaves sing to the Lord a new song. He had done marvelous things. I too will praise him with a new song. Knowledge and truth, loud sounding wisdom, sing to the Lord a new song. Daughter and son, our praying members, sing to the Lord a new song. He hath done marvelous things, I too will praise him with a new song. Has risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me in singing our hymn of praise. Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord, Alleluia. Jesus is Lord of all the earth. He is the King of creation. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. Spread the good news on the earth. Jesus has died and has risen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Give praise to his name. Crucified with Christ, now we shall live forever. Alleluia, Alleluia, give thanks to the risen Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, give praise to his name. Come, let us praise the living God. Joyfully sing to our Savior. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Praise to The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Oh God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. 
pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the word. A reading from Acts chapter 10, verses 44 through 48. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they invited him to stay for several days. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able and join in reading Psalm 98 in unison, which is on page 3 of your bulletin. Together, sing Sing to to the the Lord Lord a a new new song, song, for he he has done marvelous things. With With his right hand and his holy arm, he has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands, and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. A reading from 1 John, beginning in chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. Everyone who believes that Jesus Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The Word of the Lord. Please stand as you are able and join in singing hymn 610, Lord Whose Love Through Humble Service, verses 1 and 2 before the gospel, and verses 3 and 4 following the reading of the gospel. can be found on page 5 in your bulletin. Lord, whose love through a humble service bore the weight of human need, we upon the cross forsaken offered mercy's perfect deed. We were servants bring the worship. 
not a voice alone, but of a heart consecrating to your purpose every gift that you impart. Still your children wander homeless, still the hungry cry for bread, still the captives long for freedom, still in grief we mourn our dead. As, O oh Lord, your deep compassion hid the sick and freed the soul, use the love your spirit kindles still to save and make us whole. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to God. As we worship, grant us vision to your love's revealing light. In its height and death and greatness, turns upon a quickened sight, making known no need and burdens your compassion beats us bare, stirring us to tireless striving, your abundant life to share. Called by worship to your service, forth in your dear name we go. Child, thy youth, thy aged, love in living deeds to know. Open hell, good will and comfort, consolate and peace we give. That your servants, Lord, in freedom may. Mercy, no, and leave. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Happy Mother's Day. For many, this day is a glorious celebration of the women in our lives who have made such a difference. For all the mothers, thank you for your nurturing, 
your guiding love that heals, builds, and empowers. Thank you for loving us. But I also want to recognize that today can be one of the most distressing days of the year for some. As a woman who never gave birth, a Mother's Day, I often left the church in tears. All this talk of the joyfulness surrounding Mother's Day just left me heartbroken. And then there are those who have lost children and those who have lost their mothers. And some whose moms did not live up to the hallmark standard. Yes, this can be a difficult day. Yet in our imperfect world, we still hold aloft the ideal of a mother's love. Now, my mother happens to be spending Mother's Day in the hospital, which is pretty yucky. But if you'll pardon me just a moment, she did say she'd be watching, so hi, Mom. Love you. <laughs> Yet I think of her as the vibrant woman that she is, the woman who followed her husband to the Swiss Alps. My dad's job took us to this tiny town that at the time, no one spoke English. There weren't TVs or even washing machines or dryers. And she had four young children to comfort, feed, and raise in an incredibly difficult situation. Even when we were back stateside, Mother always served her ser herself last, meaning she got the leftovers, the piece of chicken that no one else wanted or the few crumbs left of the dessert. She sewed, she ironed, she worked hard to provide a safe and beautiful home. My mother always put the family first. We hear of this love in our gospel message today. This reading comes from Jesus' farewell discourse. It is Monday, Thursday, his last evening with his disciples. With a clock ticking over his head, what final word does Jesus want to leave his disciples with? Love. Abide in love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. I'm giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Now we know that we are supposed to love one another, but what becomes more difficult is how to love one another. And for that, we turn to the book that we are reading as a church this Easter season, Love is the Way, by our presiding bishop, Michael Curry. In it, Curry talks about a foundational book called I and Thou by the Jewish rabbi and existentialist Martin Buber. Buber writes about two possible ways that we can relate to the world around us. I and it, and I and thou. Curry tells us that if we relate to the other as it, we become the supreme being. Imagine the power differential in I and it, not only between you and the other, but between you and God. I, it. This is a place where a person puts themselves in the position of being the creator, being God. Buber and Curry advocate instead for I, thou relationship. Curry writes, thou recognizes the other as an active subject, a human spirit whose truth can be understood only through a relationship. You can't own a thou. You can't stereotype a thou. You can't throw a thou away. The loving way to experience others is through a relationship which requires you to forget what you think you may already know and open yourself to new possibilities. We do this using the skill of mindfulness. How many of you practice mindfulness? I'm curious what you think and how you use it. Curry describes mindfulness as being like the Sabbath. It provides the opportunity to stop, pause, and notice the presence of God in the world, of God in others, of God in ourselves. Mindfulness allows us to put down our shopping list, set aside our concerns, and just be. 
Mindfulness leaves behind what we think the other person needs to hear and what we may want to get off of our chest and instead actively listen to be mindful to that present moment. Catherine of Siena once wrote, the divine moment is the present moment. It is our mindfulness that we allow room to see God. And we know that God can be found in others if we can only be mindful and see. After all, Jesus tells us that God is love and God created humans in his image. Now, I'm really sure that if you asked, most of us would say, of course we love our neighbors. I don't know about you, but I'm finding it more difficult to love others in the midst of a pandemic. I find myself smiling less, hiding behind a mask. Plus, the mask feels like a shield that blocks me from others. Threat of the virus motivates me to individualism and isolationism. <laughs> I'm working on this, and I know that the pandemic will end. But I wonder, how many bad habits have I picked up in the last year and a half? I fear that it may take some work for me to see God in others. To view the world as I, thou, whether they wear masks or not whether they're Democrat or Republican, whether they're rich or poor, old or young, culturally different or not. Because this is the commandment that Jesus has given us, to love one another. Since the average employee spends over an hour a day on social media, some companies are paying their workers to spend that time improving their social skills, their training instead. Probably my most important skill is learning how to love. I wonder how much time a day I spend on that. Curry writes, even if episodically I, thou, overcomes I, it, life becomes less egotistic we and more altruistic. I'm sorry, life becomes more egotistic me and more altruistic we. It is our love that recognizes and affirms this value of human person and at attitude and actions that lead to compassionate living. And isn't that what Mother's Day is all about? Celebrating the love that affirms our human worth. The love that sees the good in us. The love that listens to our struggles, comforts our nightmares, dries our tears, and nourish us with food. Mothers, at their best, illustrate Jesus' commandment to love one another as he has loved us. I did give my mother a fern for Mother's Day. I'm not giving away surprise. She already received it. But maybe a better present would be for me to practice being a mindful person and better learn to love one another. This is my commandment that you love one another. Happy Mother's Day. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join me in singing, I will change your name. Seeks my 
face. I will change your name. You shall no long be called wounded outcast, lonely or afraid. I will change your name. Your new name shall be confidence, joyfulness, overcoming one, faithfulness, friend of God, one who seeks my face. As Christian has proclaimed their faith through the ages, let us proclaim ours using the words of the Nicene Creed and saying together, We, we believe, believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, Maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people may be found on page 8 in your bulletin. Lord Jesus Christ, the light of your love shines like the sun, illuminating all places with your brilliance. We ask that you envelop our lives with your light. You share your love in our hearts and in our friendships and families. We thank you for abundance of life. You have made us a church to bring redemption to your world. Be with all our clergy, especially presiding Bishop Michael, our bishops Andy, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, our interim rector Janice, our assisting priest Dave, and Deacon Becky. We, we thank you for, for your provision of purpose and guidance. Our country needs your direction. Be with those who guide us, especially our President Joe, our Governor Greg, our Mayor Tim, our District Attorney Henry, our County Judge David, our Police Chief Sean, and our City Manager Bryn. We, we thank, thank you, you that your eyes focus on us and your hands lead us. You defend those who give themselves to protect others. Shield, Nathan, Andrew, Brendan, Jackson, David, Trevor, 
Cody, Paul, Jason, Josh, and Matthew. We, we thank you, you that you watch, watch over, over those in distant and, and near places. places. We have much for which to be thankful. And at this point, please add your own thanksgivings here, either silently or aloud, for our mothers. Your resurrected world is revealed in tiny flowers and the songs of birds and calls of nature reborn. We thank, thank you, you for the gift of creation and, and for teaching us the value of life around us. Illness is frightening even as we journey towards health and the end of the pandemic. Be with those in any distress. And again, please hear, add your own intentions, either silently or aloud. We pray especially for Bev, Rowena, Father Mark, Emilio, Adrian, Tim, Teresa, Kelly, Pat, Jenny, Jay, Dave, Janie, Sherry, Judy, William, Haley, Bill, Harriet, Doug, Carolina, Mark, Debbie, Christy, Wyatt, Judith, Katerina, Dick, and Liz. We thank, thank you, you that, that you guide, support, and hold close those who suffer. Provide strength and wisdom to those whose hands connect in care. We thank you for those who have died and come into your presence. And again, please add your, press, your petitions here, either silently or loud. We say their names, trusting in your care. We thank, we thank you, you for, for the gift of your son, Jesus, and, and the gift of eternal life with you. With you. Your will is that all people find you. Give us insight as we see you revealed in the others among us. We, we thank, thank you that we are welcomed with all who come in humbleness. Move our hearts in care and our hands in love. Please join in the prayer for our search committee. Almighty God, giver, giver of every good gift, Look graciously on Christ's church, and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated if you're not already. It is Mother's Day, and so we would like to say a special prayer for Mother's Day. If you do have the bulletin, if you would turn with me to page 10 so we can say this prayer together. Because we want to give thanks to God for the divine gift of motherhood in all its diverse forms. So, saying together, let us pray for all the mothers among us today. For our own mothers, those living and those who have passed away, for the mothers who loved us, and for those who fell short of loving us fully, for all who hope to be mothers someday, and for those whose hope to have children has been frustrated, for all mothers who have lost children, for all women and men who have mothered others in any way, those who have been our substitute mothers, and we who have done so for those in need. We pray this all in the name of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a beautiful Mother's Day. During this Easter season, we've been talking about resurrection stories. This past year has been horrific with the pandemic, but we want to pay attention, be mindful of those times when God has redeemed and God has brought beauty out of this incredible year and a half. And so I've asked Vivian Baker to come on up, and if she would share her little story, the good news that she has found in the midst of the pandemic, the way it has changed her life. 
And if you just want to look right up in the camera, they would love to see your smiling face. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. And happy Mother's Day to everyone. I am an educator, and I am a lover of books. I am a lover of the church and Jesus Christ. And this last year has been a challenge for me. I worked as an educator in just about every job in the school business for 50 years. 10 years ago, I retired, and the thing that I missed the most were the people that I worked with. So this past year has challenged me to build new relationships in the community of the church. So I thought, what can I do? I love to read. I'm basically an introvert. I, this year won't be too bad. I have a loving husband and plenty of books. So I thought, it'll be OK. This last year, I lost three friends, not to the pandemic, but three close friends. And I thought, what are you waiting for, Vivian? You've lost three of your closest friends. You need the love of other people. So the church came to my aid. They very creatively have organized Zoom meetings. And if you all aren't familiar with those, I would highly recommend them. They connected the things that I loved, books, learning, and people. But my unexpected gift from those Zoom meetings was the deep relationships that I was able to form with the loving people that were in the Zoom meeting with me. Those relationships have changed my life. And I am thankful to our Lord for that. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Vivian. Thank you very much. Makes me teary-eyed. It is a beautiful parish. I hope that you're able to join a small group. The information's in the emails and in the bulletins so that you can participate in the life of this community and make some new friends and renew some old acquaintances. As I mentioned, the adult form will be off though this week, but we will kick back up next week at 12.30 via Zoom if you would like to join the adult form. And then on Pentecost, when we talked about having lunch and then talking about the book Love is the Way, that is also available on Zoom. Clearly we can't feed you uh, food, but we can feed you the food of the gift of conversation around Bishop Curry's amazing book. So every, most everything we do here, we do try to make it also available for those of you who are online. We appreciate you. Speaking of appreciate, we, especially, we appreciate all the gifts, the donations. Thank you. There are numerous ways to donate financially to the church. You can mail in a check. You can drop it off. You can go online to your bank's bill pay. You can text. You can go online to our bill pay. Um, there's numerous ways. However and whatever you give, please know that we are grateful for your generosity to God and to Christ Church. It is our honor and joy to give back to God that which he has already given us. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to lay aside his crown for my soul, for my soul? To lay aside his crown for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. 
to God and to the Lamb, who is the great I am. While millions join the theme, I will sing, I will sing. While millions join the theme, I will sing. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing on. And when from death I'm free, I'll sing and joyful be. And through eternity I'll sing on, I'll sing on. And through eternity I'll sing on. And of, of thine, thine own have, have we given thee. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in singing hymn 344. Lord, peace us with thy blessing, fill us with joy and peace. Let us each thy love possessing, triumphantly giving grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. Thanks we give and adoration for our gospel's joyful sound. May the fruits of thy salvation eat our and lives abound. Ever faithful, ever faithful, to thy truth may we be found. So that when thy love shall call us, Savior from the world away, fear of death shall not appall us, glad thy summons to Stay.